So while I didn't know what he was going to say, um, I did ask my dad to introduce me uh, tonight. Because when you think about who you are as a professional, as a marketer, it all starts early. You become what you were raised to believe. My dad had the proud belief that all his kids were capable of anything, but that we equally were responsible to make the most of every opportunity that came our way, to do our best to create the maximum value wherever we might show up. So for today's recognition, I first have him and my mother to thank, and I am so happy that I can share this night with them. I would also like to thank the AMA, the Academy, the judging panel for this recognition. It's even more humbling given the company I'm in with Lee Clow, a true creative genius and legend, and Seth Godin, a teacher and author who helps people find their best self. I remember when I first fell in love with marketing. It started when I was in the ad business. That love certainly was not born from doing assistant account executive work like competitive spend analyses in the cough syrup category. It wasn't partnering with the client to build business ideas. It wasn't even sitting in creative meetings being inspired by the process of imagination. Believe it or not, it was my first exposure to consumer research. The whole world opened up to me, a world of consumer needs, frustrations, love, hope. It was both the opportunity and the responsibility to deliver on those. Consumer insights became a kind of wisdom, the truth. It's what I would go to clients with to get them to consider a certain approach. It was what I was armed with when I went into creative meetings to weigh in on the human motivations behind a compelling story. It's what gave me a personal purpose, and that's carried me through my career. My time in the ad business was also full of amazing experiences. And people like Jim Patterson and Donnie Deutsch and actually many of you in this room. It was the big agencies and the creative hot shops. It was having my own agency with an incredible partner, Greg Donato, who's here tonight. When I'm asked what was the most defining moment in my career, I always say it was doing Donato Lee. When you are out there on your own, you become very clear about what you believe in. And I probably would have done it forever if it hadn't been for September 11th. At that moment when life changes on a dime, I wondered if I had done enough with my life. I went to work for the Coca-Cola Company as the Global Chief Creative Officer, a role that I was totally underqualified for, but luckily grew into. I want to hear your point of view louder and more often. I remember well that push that my boss gave me as I had to learn how to transition from playing a service role on the agency side to leading the combined marketing and agency teams to deliver breakthrough ideas that were right for our brands. Another learning for me was how to drive value and scale for a large company. Big campaigns and great execution were not enough. It was about how do you create a sustainable model for creative excellence for a global company? The right people in the right place, the right agency model, the right collaboration and funding model across markets, the right training for a global community of practitioners. I knew nothing of these things and actually had to learn it all from great people who worked for me. But it was my first big lesson in building enterprise capability to drive sustainable business impact. I loved that company and still do. But once the machinery was built, it was time to go do something new. My next big corporate gig was at AT&T. Technology. I joined the company two years after the launch of the iPhone, the world's first really mass 
smartphone. Seemingly overnight, we went from Ma Bell, the phone company, to a technology and lifestyle company, and, the, and consumer adoption of smartphones was breathtakingly fast. In the first three years that I was there, the mobile technology industry went from developing to mature. Selling smartphones went from unabated growth to fighting for share. My biggest education, besides a lesson in mobile technology and the ecosystem, was understanding that we needed to transform from a make a network, sell a network company into a relationship company. There was that pivotal piece of research. We did journey mapping with smartphone buyers of all different carriers and how they felt in the process of learning, buying, getting, using, paying, and servicing. LBGUPS, we used to call it. We collected a whole array of emotions through this process that they went through, both positive emotions and all the negative emotions. And unfortunately, all of the positive emotions were owned by the device, and all of the negative emotions were owned by the carrier. People were frustrated that they had a two-year contract with us, and yet we seemingly did nothing for them in return. If you walked into any of the carrier's stores back in those days, all you would see is rows and rows of phones. And there would be somebody behind the counter that would say to you, you know, when you've figured out which product you want, come over here and I'll ring you up. And I would sit there and think, where is the brand experience here? The only experience that I had with the brand is seeing the logo on the outside of the store. So what I realized at that time is that while brands will always be and have always been about what a company stands for, it's less understood in the narrative and more in the experience that we're good for. And it'll become increasingly more so as we move into the future. After five and a half years of working in Dallas, I had to come back to New York to join my soon-to-be husband, Carrie. Again, leaving a company that I loved, but for an even bigger kind of love. I remember when I started at my first day of that life as global CMO. I gathered the New York City-based folks, wanted to introduce myself, get to know the team, field any questions. One of my most senior people who's in this room today on my team bluntly asked, so why would you come here? <laughs> And I guess that was a pretty legitimate question. You know, coming from Coca-Cola at the time, a bastion of creativity, then AT&T, technology, lifestyle, huge budgets. I got the same bewildered questions from a lot of my colleagues around the industry. Insurance, really? The Snoopy company? I was also tickled by something that Al Reese said when he received his AMA Marketing Hall of Fame recognition and he credited the book The Hucksters for his journey into advertising. And he said, I quote, if I hadn't read this book, I'd probably be selling life insurance. <laughs> Great. But I have to tell you, in many ways, the work that I've been involved in at MetLife has yielded some of the most interesting, challenging, and self-evolving experiences of them all. Imagine an industry that's sold not bought. Agents deciding what products they need based on what the competitors have. And the role of marketing being to support the sale. Basically, blue or red brochures, right? But the company was embarking on a total shift in their business model from volume or sales to value. And value through a product lens, a distribution lens, and ah, a customer lens. There was the crack in the doorway. I'll never forget the work we did in our first market, Japan, where we conducted extensive consumer research to understand what would really drive their desire to do business with us. We learned that the most important thing that consumers were looking for from companies like ourselves was a long-term relationship. 
Meanwhile, we were operating as the epitome of a sold, not bought business. Sell, sell, selling through agents, banks, on the phone, email, mail. Some of the key consumer needs that jumped to the top of our, of, in our studies, stop selling me so hard, treat me with respect, please work on my behalf. Once again, the lesson that as marketers, we have the imperative to define our company's fundamental purpose by how we deliver value for the people we serve. And that driving value for our customers drives value for the company. We're only three years in, so early in the journey, but we have gone from a brochureware marketing organization to one that defines core customer strategies to drive business growth. Acquisition strategies that have redefined how we go to market. Loyalty strategies that are starting to redefine the post-sale customer experience. We have been fortunate to have attracted amazing talent across the globe. A new organization, new capabilities across a whole array of marketing disciplines. And yes, we are no longer the Snoopy company. Just this past Wednesday at a leadership town hall, I was gratified to hear three regional presidents talk about the impact of marketing on their businesses. When I think about my collective learnings along my marketing journey, I arrive at a few choice ahas. First, marketing as a practice is always changing largely due to emerging technologies and capabilities and new ways with which to engage people. But the fundamental role of marketing remains unchanged, which brings me to number two. Marketing is not how we sell our wares to customers and tell our stories. It's about how we become the best of what our customers need we must think about how we create a better world for the customers we serve. And by doing so, we earn their advocacy in return. Third, marketing is not just the art part, great campaigns, design, videos. And it's certainly not just at the end of the business planning process. It's also a core business engine the customer strategies that help define the business strategies. But number four, having said that, marketing is the unique domain of that convergence of art and science. Imagination, big ideas, leaps off the page, the familiar and yet the surprising. Early in my time at Coke, I did a presentation to all the top business leaders about what is creative excellence and how do we get there. I started by showing a video of some of our amazing agency creative leaders around the, from around the world talking about their definition of creative excellence. My favorite quote came from Dan Wyden. And he said, creative excellence is something that comes through the window or the back door and taps you on the shoulder and you whip around and go, Jesus! Now, I don't know many actuaries that bring that into their daily consideration. <laughs> and finally, number five, as marketers, to gain traction and drive value, we have to learn the language of relevance for each specific corporate culture. At Coke, you needed to inspire to drive change. At at and you were dead in the water if you couldn't talk about the speed of execution. For MetLife, no one believes you unless you present a business case with a clear path to financial return. Without mastering this language of relevance, it's really hard to succeed. In closing, I feel so privileged to be able to call marketing my home for all these years and all these chapters, to be able to create a better world for customers, to be able to create value for amazing companies, and more than anything, to be able to work for some of the, with some of the smartest, most interesting, and most dedicated people I know. Thank you again for this amazing honor.